Hi, this is Neil Sound Dynasty. Hey. Please like, share, and subscribe. Okay. Be kind, helpful, grateful. Sounds good. And buy some silver, some platinum, and some crystallized osmium. Why should we do that? Well, because it's a good thing to do. Hell, I don't know. Don't do it and see what happens. <laughs> it's not what this is about. This is about, hey, this is about my cats fighting. Quit fighting. Well, that's what it's about. Now it's not about because they're done fighting. Uh, when I've told you for, I've, I've said this for quite some time, well over a year, uh, small modular reactors are the future of energy. Watch out for micro nuclear reactors because they're small, portable, you know, fit in a container that you can haul around on an 18 wheeler. Everyone's like laughing at me and stuff. And I'm saying, you know what? By 2030, power will be 70 to 75% cheaper than it is now. And everyone's like, ah, Neil is so out there. Hey, quit fighting. Neil, you're so far out there. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. I said it for a year. I sound crazy. But you know what? I'm only crazy till I'm proven right. Nine days ago, the future of small, mobile, micro micro radiant micro reactors by radiant let's see what they have to say see he's stupid like i am this is fission power we're trying to build a new reactor here something that nobody's ever done before but to me it's actually just minimum viable product we're building the smallest nuclear reactor it's super hard scaling a company is challenging this is a superpower to have on earth all of that has led to this moment we're now we're just 18 months away from having the real deal <laughs> So where are we and what does Radiant do? We're in El Segundo at Radiant's headquarters and we are designing a portable micro reactor that can replace a one megawatt diesel generator and can be mass produced. One gigabyte diesel generation generator replacement and it can be mass produced. How much is one gigabyte? Research it. See how much you can power with one gigabyte. Radiant is a company. I wanted to... And it can be mass produced. That's the size of it, by the way. Wow, that's small. One gigabyte. Mass produced. Huh. Wow, sounds like Neil might have been right. Shoot with. Since I started filming the S3 series nearly 50 weeks ago, and finally, in El Segundo, California, we got the time to document where they're at today after their recent test success on their helium circulator test load. Helium is pioneering miniaturized mobile nuclear reactors to provide power in rough terrains and to re-inspire the atomic age. Nuclear has the highest energy density of any form of fuel that humanity has discovered and mastered. It's two million times the energy density of any hydrocarbon. You can have a huge amount of fuel and take up almost no mass. So yep. I think nuclear power is essential to the long-term sustainability of the human species. I think there's really no path forward for power generation in human civilization that doesn't involve nuclear, whether that be fission or fusion. I really want either technology to succeed. And right now, I think the most practical one and the fastest path to getting us off of fossil fuels and expanding our capability is fission power. And in particular, portable fission power also enables a longer term civilization sustainability, which is something that Doug likes to talk about, which is space travel, right? And that's real, originally how we got into this in the first place. Um, this is a, a superpower to have on Earth. If you want to, you know, have cities at the bottoms of oceans, you could do that with the nuclear fuel. If you want to have power up on top of Mount Everest or in the Arctic, really anywhere on the Earth, this is the best form of fuel that there is. If it's a challenge to get to that location, um, you can think about space as just an extension, just a more remote and farther forward operating location. Over 55% of U.S. soldier casualties in the two Iraqi conflicts are from ambush convoys. And convoys always move ammo, water, and fuel. And so if you could put a reactor in one of these locations, then you completely remove all those fuel shipments. You save tens of thousands of lives. Nuclear power saves lives. I don't think we hear that very often. Medical isotopes save way more lives than that. And uh, medical diagnostic imaging is probably the single greatest thing that nuclear power does, and, and people don't recognize it. It's natural that we need to be looking at nuclear technology, both on Earth in challenging locations and to save lives, but also in space. I like this guy. I am so much about space colonization, space mining. And this guy is going to give me the power source I need to go up there and mine asteroids. Typically, nuclear reactors are very large. Um, you see like big gigawatt-sized things that 
massive undertaking, billions of dollars, many, many years for something to come to fruition. Uh, and, and that sort of has led to a stall in the nuclear industry of new reactors just because it takes so much upfront capital and then so much time to actually gain the reward from that project. Nuclear is a story told in decades. So in the 60s, we developed everything. Nuclear reactors were made for submarines. In the 70s, we started to deploy power reactors based off of those uh, submarine reactors. In the 80s, we really had nuclear reach its peak scale in the U.S., but then we also had Chernobyl, a huge international disaster. And then in the 90s, you know, we had a turnaround where states banned nuclear. I think throughout all this, there was this growing uh, you know, environmental outrage and concern, and then uh, climate change, and then a ex eventually an acceptance of climate change. And I think we're now in the 2000s in this era where we have solar and we have wind and we have all these renewables, uh, and everyone is excited about having a cleaner planet. And they've come back to recognize that that nuclear from 50 years ago is not the nuclear of today. We're trying to build a new reactor here, something that nobody's ever done before. A big part of our culture is to just iterate as quickly as possible. The only way to do that is to make a lot of reactors. That's sort of one of the big cornerstones of Radiant, is to make small reactors, things that we can actually make quickly and make a lot of, uh, and progressively make the design a lot better. Obviously, Radiant's developing Kaleidos, which is a portable nuclear reactor, which is meant to re replace diesel gensets. But to me, it's actually just minimum viable product. We're building the smallest nuclear reactor because uh, smaller is cheaper. It's super hard to do what we're doing right now, which is basically building our Falcon 1, but for a nuclear reactor. The reason why it's hard is because there's a ton of uh, regulatory hur hurdle uh, against it, uh, and we don't get to do it multiple times. We have to build this thing, and it's got to turn on. We have to go through a series of tests, and uh, by the time we're done, we have demonstrated several key characteristics uh, of the reactor. Simultaneously, that needs to align with our production unit, which is going to replace uh, diesel generators. So that, that's the challenge. Um, so I would say what Radiant is doing right now is actually developing the capability to design, produce, and build nuclear reactors. Now, how to build nuclear reactors. The problem is that they tend to be really big, expensive, and difficult to construct. Radiant's solution to this problem is to miniaturize these reactors, demonstrating their safety step by step. The size of a container on the back of an 18 wheeler, and you have yourself one gigabyte of portable power. Green power. Wow, that could fit on a moon base, too. Hmm. I guess everyone's going to be laughing when they find out space mining is going to be the next big thing. Here's the power source. Oh, by the way, the English government contracted with Rolls-Royce to have one of these ready for a moon base by 2032. Just a heads up. You guys have a nice night.